record so that this thing is recording. Okay, so um, just a heads up, I have uploaded the playlist. So if you click on this here, the first video should be there already, 1350. So I just did it at, at the end of class on Monday, guys, after I, when I got through with my other class, but the 1350 lectures right there. Like I said, each day that we have class, I'm going to upload the lecture that day. Um, so what I want us to do today, for, from now on, y'all, we should be meeting here in A103. Uh, the computers over there, I don't know what was going on with them, but they're not doing what they need to do. And I think the format of this room is better, so at least we're all right looking over here. You don't have to turn your head too much. But what I want us to do today is we're going to, there was still one last problem in section 1.1 that I didn't get a chance to do. So I want to do that one, and then once I'm done with that, uh, I'm sorry, 1.1, then we'll do one two. Once I'm done with that, I'll help you guys get up, get set up on my lab if you haven't already done it. Uh, you can do it here in this room since we have computers. If you have your own computer or, lap or iPad or whatever, that's all good too. So let's see. When we were here on Monday, y'all, we left off on this problem right here. Okay. So what I want us to do is I want us to finish up. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is, uh, like today, since I'm recording this right now, that will get, get updated today. So you'll have the video for one. Yeah, they're always going to stay there. Yeah, the, yeah, I'm not deleting anything. Everything, it's just get, the list is just going to get longer as we go through. Yeah, because I have an online class for the same course. So what I'm doing is I'm recording our lecture, and then they can watch it so that they have an idea of what to do, right? Kind of like if they were here, but doing it at home. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. Good question, good question. All right, y'all, so this is the last section from, or the last problem, sorry, from section 1.1. And the strategy, what we were doing in 1.1 was like figuring out strategies. How can we, you know, solve certain problems? And so the last strategy here is work backwards. And it says in some problems, it's easier to start with the result and then to work backwards. So let's take a look here. It says, um, one winter night, the temperature fell 16 degrees between midnight and 5 a.m. By 9 a.m., the temperature had doubled from what it was at 5 a.m. By noon, it had risen another 11 degrees to 35 degrees. What was the temperature at midnight? Okay, so first thing I want to do, I want to sort of keep a list of the times that we're talking about. So we're trying to figure out what was the temperature at 12 a.m., right? From midnight, what's the next time they took the temperature? At 5, right? At 5 a.m., okay? Now, I don't know what those temperatures are. We're going to see if we can figure that out. After 5 a.m., when was the next time they took the temperature? At 9, right? So at 9 a.m., okay? And then uh, from 9 a.m., they went to which one? They went to noon, right? Okay. So now, we know the times, right? Do we know what the temperature was at noon? It says it had risen another 11 degrees to how much? To 35. So we know that at 12 p.m. it was 35 degrees, right? Because that's what they're telling me. At 12 p.m. it had risen from whatever it was at 9 a.m. It had risen 11 degrees to get to 35. So if the temperature increased from whatever it happened to be at 9 a.m. to get to 35 degrees, how would I go backwards? we would have to subtract, right? So we would say, look, let's take 35 and let's subtract 11. That would give me 24 degrees, right? I'm just working my way backwards, okay? That's at 9 a.m. Okay, now from 9 a.m., we wanna go back to 5 a.m. So let's take a look at this part right here. I'm gonna underline it. It says by 9 a.m., the temperature had doubled from what it was at five. So whatever the temperature was here, it had to double. So we had to multiply it by two to get 24. How would I go backwards? We would divide it, right? So we'd say, what's 24 divided by two? Oh, that would be 12 degrees, right? Okay. So now it says, uh, let's see. I'm going to clean up some of this mess right here. Here we go. One winter night, the temperature fell 16 degrees between midnight and 5 a.m. So whatever it used to be at 12 a.m., it had dropped 16 degrees. 
So if it dropped, that means that it was getting colder, right? So how would I go back to figure out what the temperature was at midnight? If it had dropped 16 degrees and I want to go backwards, what am I going to do with my 16? We're going to add it, right? So 12 plus 16 is going to give me 28. Does that make sense? So all again, all we're doing, guys, is we're trying to figure out how do I go backwards, right? So one thing I really want to emphasize about this problem, the first thing I did was let me make at least a list of the times, right? Because I want to know the temperature at each of those times. I know I'm trying to get back over here, but before I get there, I got to get to here and here. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever driven to San Antonio and you're, and you're going to go on 77, like through Harlingen or whatever? You know, before you hit San Antonio, you're going to hit like, uh, I always go through 21, uh, but you're going to hit the checkpoint, right? Whether you go through 21 or, you know what I mean? Before you get there, you got to get to these extra steps, okay? So that was kind of the idea behind this problem. All right, so anywho, that was the last problem out of 1.1. So let's go ahead and move on to 1.2. And so 1.2 is explorations with patterns. And it says students will be able to understand and explain uh, finding patterns and determining if a pattern holds, uh, deductive and inductive reasoning and when to use them, uh, different types of sequences such as the arithmetic sequence, the geometric sequence. We're actually not going to do the Fibonacci one today, y'all. We're going to hold off on that one. Uh, we are going to figure out how to find the nth term of certain sequences and using the differences to find a pattern for neither uh, arithmetic or geometric. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about are these things called arithmetic sequences. So arithmetic sequences are sequences that are ordered in arrangement of numbers, figures, or objects. Uh, they can be classified by their properties. And it says a sequence in which each successive term is obtained from the previous term by addition or subtraction of a fixed number. So let's take a look at the example that we have here. It says the sequence 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, so on and so forth, is called an arithmetic sequence because the difference between each term is 3. What we mean by that, y'all, is how do I get from 2 to 5? We add 3. How do we get from 5 to 8? We add 3. How do we get from 8 to 11? We add 3. So every single time, all we're doing to get from here to here is adding 3, right? And so on and so forth. Okay. So we have a formula. This formula here is going to work for any arithmetic sequence. Okay. <clears throat> Just so that we know what this stands for, the term AN stands for the nth term of the sequence. What I mean by the nth term, I mean like if I were to say, what's the 17th term? Or what is the 52nd term? Or what's the 113th term? We could figure those things out, okay? There's a formula. The way we do the formula is we're going to take A1. A1 is going to be the first term in the sequence, okay? Plus this expression N minus 1 times the value of D. D is what we call the common difference between the terms, okay? So let me show you how I'm going to do this using the first example we have here. So looking at this first problem, y'all, we have 5, 12, 19, 26, 33. Does anybody know how much am I adding to each number to get to the next number? We're adding seven. Okay, good. We're adding seven. So what that tells me, y'all, is that the value of D is seven. It's the amount that we're adding from one term to get to the next one. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use this value here so that we can find, we can write out our formula. Okay. So this is what I'm going to say. Look, a n is equal to a one. A one is the first number in the sequence. What's the first number in our sequence? Five, right? Okay, so we're going to put five plus n minus one. That part is always going to be the same. It's always going to be n minus one times whatever our value for d is. And in this case, we said our value of d was seven. So we're going to say a n equals five. Plus, now I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here, right? I got to distribute my 7. So the 7 is going to multiply to both those terms. So 7 times n is just a 7n. Seven, 7 times 1 is a 7, but there's a minus there, so it's got to stay a minus 7. Okay. And now 
I can combine this number and that number. So I'm going to leave my 7n right there. Now, y'all, you might remember this. In case you don't, I'm going to tell you. Think of a positive number as how much money you have, and think of a negative number as how much money you owe. So if I have $5, but I owe you 7 and I run into you in the hallway, are we cool or would I still owe you money? How much money would I still owe you? And because I owe it, what kind of two is it going to be? Negative, right? Okay. What we've just done here, y'all, we just found the formula so that we can figure out whichever term we're looking for. If I'm looking for the 50th term, everywhere I have an N, I would just plug in a 50. If I'm looking for the 72nd term, everywhere I have an N, I would just put in the number 72. What term are we looking for? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to say A of 100, because I'm putting the 100 where the N used to be. Just let me know which term I'm looking for is equal to 7 times 100 minus 2. Okay, so 700, and 700 minus 2 is going to give me 698. Is that one of my options? Yeah, it's right there, right? Boom. So we got it. Now, that little formula, y'all, is going to be really helpful in doing these problems, okay? So I'm going to keep referring back to that formula as we go through the next few problems, too. <clears throat> All right, so let's try the next one. Same thing here. We're going to find the nth term in the difference in this sequence here. So the first thing I'm going to do, y'all, each time I'm going to write down my little formula, a n equals a1 plus n minus 1 times d. So that's my formula that I'm going to be using, right? Okay, so first thing, let's see if we can find the value of D. How much are we adding from one number to get to the next? We're adding five. Okay, so we know D is five. Second thing, do we know the first term? What's the first number in that sequence? Five as well, right? Okay, so now we're going to write out our formula. We're going to say A N equals the first term, which is five plus n minus 1 times the value of d, which in this case was also 5. Okay. All right, again, we're going to distribute one more time. So 5 times n is going to give me a 5n. 5 times a negative 1 is going to give me a minus 5. Now, if you recall, remember what I said, think of a positive number as how much money you have. And a negative number is how much money you owe. So if I owe you $5 and I have $5, we are cool. And I'm still left with that 5N, right? So that gives me my general formula. So the question says, find the nth term. Well, that's the formula for the nth term. Is that one of my options? Yeah, it's right there, right? It's choice D. So we got it. So y'all, I, I want you to realize something. This problem, we did it the same way we did the first one. Regardless of whatever term they're asking me to do, I'm going to find the formula. And then if it's asking me for, say, the 36 term, then I'll just plug in a 36. But if it just says find the nth term, then the formula is all I'm really looking for. Does that make sense? OK, cool. All right, so the second type of sequence that we have are these things called geometric sequences, OK? So it says uh, a sequence in which each successive term is obtained from the previous term by multiplying by a fixed non-zero number. OK, so let's take a look here. It says uh, an example. It says the sequence 2, 6, 18, 54 is the geometric sequence because the ratio between each term is 3. What they mean by that, y'all, is if you were to take the second term, which is 6, and divided by the first term, which is 2, 6, I'm sorry, yeah, 6 divided by 2 is going to give me 3. If I were to take 18, which is the third term, and divide it by the one right before it, which is 6, I'm going to get 3. Okay, that's what we call the ratio. And it's going to continue, so on and so forth. We do have a formula for a geometric sequence. And the formula says... A n, which is my nth term, is going to be equal to, remember, A1 is the first term. 
times whatever that ratio is, like in this case, it's three, but notice the power, n minus one, right? Okay, so look, what we're gonna do here for this next problem, it says, in each of the following, list the list three terms that continue either the arithmetic or the geometric sequence, and identify the sequences as either arithmetic or geometric. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one, part A. Sorry about all that noise, guys, over there. I don't know what they're doing, but they're making a lot of noise next door. Okay, so we have 1, 9, 17, 25, 33, right? Okay, so first thing I want to figure out, is this sequence arithmetic or is it geometric? So my recommendation, guys, I think it's always easier to test to see if it's arithmetic by saying, how much do I have to add from this number to get to that one? How much would I have to add? Eight, right? Could we still add eight from nine to get to 17? Yeah, we can keep doing that, right? So I always think it's easier to figure out, is there a difference between the two numbers? Remember, all you're really doing is nine minus one, 17 minus nine, right? 25 minus 17. So we know that the sequence for part A is going to be arithmetic, right? Because all, you gotta, all you're really doing is adding eight to the next one. Okay, so we found out that it was arithmetic. The question is tell me, list three terms that continue the sequence. So I wanna put three more numbers here. One, two, three, okay. Does anybody know what number would I write in the first box if I'm adding eight each time? What's 33 plus eight? 41, okay. If I add another eight? 49, okay, and if I add one more eight? 57, right, good, okay. So that's what they're asking me to do. They're asking me, put the next three terms, okay? So arithmetic, and we got our next three terms. Now, let's look at part B, okay? So part B, the numbers that I have for part B are three, nine, 27, 81, 243, and then we're going to do three more terms. Okay, so now the next question is, is this sequence arithmetic or is it geometric? So again, my recommendation, check and see if it's arithmetic. The difference between those two numbers, oops, the difference between those two numbers there, y'all, is six. The difference here is not six. I know that. So I know it's not arithmetic. So that's telling me it's going to have to be a geometric sequence because I only got those two options at this point. The way I find my ratio, I'm going to take this number and divide it by that one. 9 divided by 3 is 3. You can check 27 divided by the one before it, is 9 is also 3. So what are we doing? We're multiplying this number by 3 to get to that one. We're multiplying this number by 3 to get to that one. We're multiplying this number by 3 to get to that one. Does anybody know what number would I write here, here, and there? What's 243 times 3? 729? Okay, what's 729 times 3? 2,187? Okay, and then one more? 20, 2,187 times 3, something going to end in a 1? 6,000, I'm sorry. Five, one, six, six, one, like that. Okay, there we go. And we know that this one here, y'all, is geometric, right? All right, so again, that's the difference between arithmetic and geometric sequences. All right, and I believe we have a part C, so let's do part C. So part C, we have... 15, 23, uh, 31, 39, 47, and we're going to do 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so let's see. Anybody know Are we how much we're adding from one to get to the next? Eight, right? And we keep playing that game all the way, to, all the way through, right? So I know that that is an arithmetic sequence, okay? And we're just going to keep adding 8. So 47 and 8, shouldn't that be a 55? And 55 and 8 should be 
63, and then one more is going to give us 71, right? Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at this next one here, y'all. Let's see if we can't figure it out. It says... Uh, a sheet of paper is cut into three same size parts, and each of those parts is then cut into three same size parts, and so on. After the seventh cut, how many small, how many of the smallest pieces of paper are there? Okay, so this is what I'm going to think about. I'm going to have a piece of paper that's going to look like this. Okay, I'm just drawing a picture because I'm trying to get a visual of what's going on, right? And we're going to cut it into three equal parts. Okay. So we cut that into three equal parts. When we cut it the first time, how many pieces of paper do we have now? We have three, right? Three separate pieces. Okay, now it says we're going to cut each of those pieces into another three pieces, right? So look, did we cut each of those pieces so now that each of them are three pieces? Okay, so this is the second cut, right? How many squares do I have? Nine, right? Okay. So what I want to think about, y'all, is this right here. I'm taking the number three. After the first cut, we had three pieces. Then when we did the second cut, we had nine pieces. And what I'm thinking about is, how does three relate to nine? If I square three, don't I get nine? And if I have three to the first power, remember any number raised to the first power is just that number itself. So when it when I look at part A and it says after the seventh cut, so if we were to keep doing this, when we would get to the seventh cut, wouldn't we say that's just going to be three to the power of seven, right? Because after the first cut, there's three. After the second cut, that's nine. I'm scoring my number, right? I'm raising it to whatever power I have. So the answer here would be three to the seventh. Now, <clears throat> y'all, in my lab, sometimes it'll tell you, hey, go ahead and write it as an exponent. So you would just leave it like that. But if it said, hey, you need to go ahead and, and write the full number on your calculator, you could just do three to the power of seven, and I'd come up with 2187. Okay. Depending on how my lab asks you to write it, You'll, you'll either put 2187 or you'll write 3 to the 7th, okay? Now, there is a part B to this problem. Part B says, after the nth cut, well, I know after the 7th cut, it's 3 to the 7th. After the nth cut, wouldn't it just be 3 to whatever that power n is going to be, right? Because I'm kind of following a pattern here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one here. See, we can't figure this out. And when I'm looking at this problem here, y'all, it says if a person puts one cent in a piggy bank on the first day and two cents on the second day and three cents on the third day and so forth, how much money will be in that piggy bank after 30 days? Okay, so let's think about that for a second. On day one, how much money did we put in? A penny, right? So I'm going to think about this like a penny. And on the second day, we put in two pennies, right? And we're trying to figure out how much money we're going to have in total. Three pennies. All the way up to how many days? 30 days. Did we do a problem like this on Monday? Right? So look, remember how we did this on Monday, y'all? I'm going to call that my sum, right? So look, I'm going to write my sum again, but I'm going to write it going backwards. Remember, 30. What would be right after 30? 29, right? Okay. All the way down to 1. Okay. So now, when we add straight down, that's going to give me twice my sum is, well, 1 plus 30 is 31, and 31, and so we're continuing adding the number 31. Does anybody know how many times we're adding the number 31? How many numbers do we have here total? We were at, that's right. We have 30 numbers, so we're adding it up a total of 30 times. 
Do you all remember what the last step we had to do was? Divide by two. Perfect. Could have stayed home today, guys. You all already know what to do. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to take my calculator. Here we go. Move this over to the side. 31 times 30 and divide it by 2. 465, right? That's how many pennies I have, but that's really, what, $4.65? And there's my answer right there, right? All right, cool. Okay, so next problem I have here, y'all, it says find the 100th and the nth term for each of the following sequences. Okay, so we have, we actually have like five little problems here, okay? So I'm going to try to give myself enough space so I can do it. So I'm going to put part A right here. And we have 1 and 7 and 13 and 19. Okay, so the first thing I need to figure out, is this an arithmetic sequence or is this a geometric sequence? So remember what we're going to do. We're going to say, am I adding the same number each time? What do you all think? Are we adding the same number each time? How much are we adding? Six. Okay, good. So this is an arithmetic se sequence where my where the value of d is six. Remember, a one a one just stands for the first the first term. What was the first term? One, right? Okay. So y'all, the formula that we used a little while ago looks like this. Okay. I'm just writing it down again so that you don't have to turn your papers back. All right. So now what we want to do, we're going to find both the hundredth and the nth term. So guys, it's actually easier for me to find the formula first, okay? So let's find our formula. So a n equals a1, which we said was 1, n minus 1 times the value of d, which is a 6. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's going to give me a 6n minus 6. And so this is going to be 6n. Anybody know what a plus 1 and a minus 6 is? I have a dollar, I owe you six. Are we cool? Do I owe you money? How much do I owe you? Five. Because I owe it to y'all, it's negative, right? Okay, so that's my formula for the nth term, right? Now remember, we're finding two things. We're finding the nth term and we're finding the hundredth term. It's always easier for me to find the formula for the nth and then I can find, figure out what the hundredth term is going to be. So remember, if I want to find a of 100, I'm going to say, well, what's 6 times 100 minus 5? 6 times 100 is 600 minus 5 is going to leave me with, what, 595? So there's my 100th term, and there's my nth term. Okay. Should have given you guys more space on the paper to do these. I'm sorry, guys. That's my bad. All right, so we got part A done. Let's do part B. So I'm just going to scooch over here a little bit where I have some more room. Part B is 60, 100, 140, so on and so forth. Okay, first question, arithmetic or geometric? Are we adding the same number each time? What do you think? Yeah, we are, right? Yeah, we're adding, we're adding how much each time? We're adding 40, right? Okay, good. So we know that the value of D is 40, okay? What is the first term? 60, right? Okay, so look, y'all, I'm going to write down my formula. Formula says A1 plus N minus 1 times D. I always write the formula down. What it does, it's kind of like a tattoo in my, in my brain. It's going to make me remember the formula more often than I write it, okay? So look, a n equals a1, which we said was 60, plus n minus 1 times d, which we said was 40. Okay. When I multiply the 40 to both pieces, that gives me a 40n minus 40. All right, so I got a 40n. Anybody know what 60 minus 40 is? 20, right? Okay. Here is my formula, y'all. Come on, pen. Here's my formula for the nth term. Okay. Now, we still want to find the hundredth term. 
So we're going to write A of 100 is going to be equal to 40 times 100 plus 20. Okay, so I'm going to take my calculator. 40 times 100 is 4,000 plus 20 is 4020. Boom. And we got it. Okay. All right. So we did the second one. Let's take a look at part C. Okay. So here's part C. 1, 4, 16. Okay. So again, I'm just doing this on the side. I should have given you guys more room. Okay. So next thing I need to figure out, okay, is this an arithmetic sequence or is it a geometric sequence? Am I adding the same number each time to get from one to the next? No, right, because from one to four is three, from four to 16 is 12. Okay, so it's not arithmetic. The way we find, so it has to be geometric, y'all. And the, we're gonna look for here is something we call the ratio. The ratio is take one term and divide it by the one before it. So if I take 16 and I divide it by four, what am I gonna get? Anybody know how many times four goes into 16? Four times, right? You can even do it with the first two terms. What's four divided by one? Still four, right? Okay, so this is a geometric sequence. So there's a formula for finding our geometric sequence. It is A1 times the ratio of the power N minus one, okay? So, we found our ratio. We already know that our ratio is four, okay? Do we know what the first term is? First term is what, one? So we're gonna have one times the ratio, which is four to the power n minus one. Question y'all, what happens when we multiply something by one? Does it change? No. So here's my formula, four to the power n minus one. That's giving me the formula for my nth term. Now, the n minus 1, y'all, is an exponent. It's my power, okay? So it's not 4 times n minus 1. It's 4 raised to the power n minus 1. So now, if we want to find the 100th term, we're going to take 4 and raise it to the power 100 minus 1. But I know 100 minus 1 is 99, right? Now guys, I'm gonna say, I'm pretty confident that when you're and doing this on my lab, it's gonna say, you can leave it as an exponent. It's not gonna ask you to write it, write like the actual number. And I wanna say it's gonna do that, mainly because if I were to take, let me see, that's a standard calculator, let me go to a scientific. If I were to take four, where's my power right here, to the power 99, look how big that number is. This, I don't know if y'all know this, but if you look over here to the right, do you see how it has that positive 59? That means that there that I would have to move that decimal point 59 spaces further down to the right. I can tell you right now, I know I don't have 59 numbers here. There's still more numbers there, but that number gets so big, so fast, that we would just leave our answer as four to the 99, okay? All right, so there's part C. So let's see what else we got over here. I know there's two more parts, part D and part E. Okay, part D. So we have 10, 10 to the third, 10 to the fifth, 10 to the seventh. Okay, so let's do part D. D is in dog. 10, 10 to the third, 10 to the fifth, 10 to the seventh. Okay. So again, I know that this is not gonna be an arithmetic sequence because I'm not adding, right? I have powers of 10. So the way I'm gonna find my ratio, y'all, remember, we're gonna take one term and divide it by the previous term. So 10 to the third divided by 10. If you remember this from algebra, the power on that 10 right there, when I don't see it, is a one. When we have two numbers with the same base, what I mean by the same base, they're both 10s, or they're both fives, or they're both y's, whatever. What we do, y'all, is we subtract the exponents. What's three minus one? Two, okay? Just to make sure that we're doing this right, you can always do the next two. You can say, look, what's 10 to the fifth? 
divided by 10 to the third, you still subtract your powers, 10 squared, okay? So that right there, y'all, is gonna be my ratio. That's my value of R, okay? Now, first thing, next thing I'm gonna do, y'all, I'm gonna write down my formula. For a geometric sequence, it's always A1 times R to the power and minus one, okay? So let's see if we can figure this out. This is gonna be AN equals A1. Remember what A1 is. A1 is the first term. So that's a 10 times my ratio. My ratio in this case, y'all, is a 10 squared to the power n minus one, okay? Now, we're gonna do a little bit of algebra here, y'all. The algebra we're gonna do says, if you have something being raised to a power and that's being raised to a power, what we do is we multiply the exponents, okay? So I'm gonna write this as, I'm gonna take this two and I'm gonna distribute times that n minus one. That's gonna leave me with a two n minus two, because I'm just taking that two and multiplying it by that part, okay? Now, a little while ago, I told y'all, if I just see a 10, it really means 10 to the power of one, okay? I got one more thing to simplify here. When we have two numbers with the same base and we're multiplying them, what we do with our exponents, y'all, is we take those two exponents and we add them together. What I mean by that is I'm gonna take one plus two n minus two. I can combine that one and that minus two to leave me with a two n minus one. So my final answer is gonna be n to the power or 10 to the power two n minus one. So there is my formula. Now remember, we're still looking for the 100th term, right? So we're looking for the 100th term. What we're gonna do is two times 100 minus one. Okay. Two times 100 is 200. And anybody know what 200 minus one is? 199, right? And again, y'all, I'm gonna leave my answer like that, right? I'm not gonna to try to do it on my calculator because you could see what happens when we did four to the power 99, how big that number got. If we take a bigger number like 10 and we multiply it uh, 199 times, just so that you know what it would look like, it would look something like this. And you know how many zeros I would need? I would need a total of 199 zeros. That's a whole lot of zeros, right? Okay, so we do have one last part for this particular problem. Uh, part E, let me see if I can find it. Here we go, where is it? Okay, here's part E. And you know what guys, I'm actually gonna do part E right here because I do have some room here. Okay, so looking at this sequence, it looks pretty ugly, right? It's not as simple as some of the other ones. Um, this is what we're gonna do. I want you to notice the 188 all of them have. So don't worry about the 188 right now. What we have is we have two to the 28th. They all have the two to the 28th as well, right? But look at these numbers, five, six, seven. Are they going up by the same amount each time? They're going up by how much? They're going up by one, right? I'm gonna show you how we can figure out a formula and how to write that sequence. So number one, guys, this is gonna be an arithmetic, oops, let me write this a little bit better. That's gonna be an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so the other thing I wanna point out is that's the first term, that's the second term, that's the third term. The way I'm gonna write my formula A and N, they all have the 188, so I'm gonna write that down. Now, if this is the first term, what do I have to add to one to get five? What number plus one would give me five? Four, so I'm gonna put n plus four times that uh, two to the power 28, okay? Now, I wanna show you how I'm doing this. If this is the first term, if I, if I say one plus four gives me five, two plus four gives me six, three plus four gives me so that's the pattern that I'm basically following, okay? So look, y'all, 
this is my formula for the nth term, okay? Now, question, how would I write the 100th term? Anybody know? Can anybody tell me, if I were to plug in 100, I'll give you a hint. There's going to be a 188 there. Plus, what number would I have right here? Somebody said it. 100 and 104 times 2 to the 28th. And this is what you would exactly write, guys. You wouldn't, write, you wouldn't actually try to figure it out. It's going to be too big of a number to write down. Okay? Remember, all I'm doing to find the 100th term is plugging in 100 right here. So 100 plus 4 is 104, right? I'm still leaving the 188 there because it's part of my problem. I'm still leaving the 2 to the 28th there because it's part of my problem. <clears throat> All right, so that was kind of a long problem because it had so many parts, right? Okie dokie, so let's take a look at the next one here. It says, use a traditional clock face uh, to determine the next three sequences, the uh, next three terms in the following sequence. So, let me see, I think this is right here. Where is it? 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 Where
I say, what's 50 times 12? Uh, 600? Okay, so question, are we going to have 600 students? Or we're going to have 600 more students? 600 more students, right? So now we got to take 900, and we're going to add 600 to it. And isn't that going to give us 1,500 students? There you go. And you got it. Good deal, y'all. All right, let's keep moving along here. And let's see. Uh, so it says, Joe's annual income has been increasing each year by the same dollar amount. Uh, the first year, his income was 21900 And in the fifth year, his income was 24700 And it says, in which year was his income 29600 Okay. So we're trying to figure out how many years is it going to take for him to make 29600 okay? So <clears throat> first thing we know is it's increasing each year by the same amount. So in year one, Joe made what, 21900 Okay. And then in year five, he made what, 24700 Okay question y'all does anybody know how much it went up by in those in those years how could we figure that out subtract them out right good so let's do that let's take let me move my calculator over a little bit and i'll make it a basic one if i can there we go okay so let's take twenty four thousand seven hundred minus twenty one thousand nine hundred okay so i'm coming up with twenty eight hundred okay so in that time y'all his increase was 2,800. Now that was 2,800, but how many years passed between year one and year five? Anybody know how many years? Four years, right? Four years. So if in four years he made an additional 2,800, could we figure out how much money he's making each year? How would we do that? Divide, right? So we're gonna take 28, oops. So to find out how much he's making each year, we're going to take 2,800 and we're going to divide it by four and that's going to give me 700, okay? 700. All right. So what we're going to do now, y'all, we're going to write a little formula. We're going to figure out how we can write Joe's salary. Okay. So Joe's salary was in the first year, it was 21,900 and it goes up by 700 each time. Right? So, uh, let's see 21,900 and then each additional year, it goes up by 700, right? So we're going to take 700 times however many years it's going to take. I'm going to call that, I don't know, X or something like that, right? To figure out how many years. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so what I want to know is how long it's going to take for him to get to 29,600. So could we take 29,600? Could we subtract off how much he was already making? which was 21,900, right? And let's see how much that's gonna leave us with. So 29,600 minus 21,900 is gonna be 7,700, okay? How many years is it gonna take for him to earn that if he's earning $700 a year? What would I have to do with those numbers? Divide them out, okay? So what's 7,700 divided by 700? Anyone know? I'll give you a hint. You can go like that. You can go like that. Seven goes into 77? 11 times, right? So it should take him 11 years to get there, right? I'm sorry? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm coming up with, 11. Yeah. Right. 
Okay, so let's take a look at this next one here, y'all. Uh, it says, how many terms are there in each of the following sequences? Okay, how many terms are there in each of the following sequences? Okay, so look, let's do it like this. Part A, we have 56, we have 57, 58, all the way down to 456. Okay, do you all agree that each of them are going up by one? Okay, so remember, since that's my first term, that's my second term, that's my third term. Since I'm not starting off at one, what I would do is I would do it like this. If I were to sort of find like a formula for my sequence here, I would say, how much am I adding to one to get to 56? 55, right? So I would say, look, n plus 55. Because when n is one, one plus 55 gives me 56. Two plus 55 gives me 57. Three plus 55 gives me 58. So if I wanted to figure out what term is the 456, I would say, look, let the 456 term be equal to n plus 55. How would I get rid of my plus 55? Subtract it, good. Okay, those are gonna go away. So 456 minus 55 should be something like 451. So for part A, there are 451 terms, right? And all I'm doing here, y'all, is I'm just trying to figure out how many terms do I have? So I'm not actually looking for like the last term or the second term. I'm trying to figure out how many numbers do I have in that list, okay? Okay, so now when I look at part B, part B starts off with one and then five and then five squared all the way down to five to the power 70. Okay. Question, does everybody agree that I can think of this as a five to the one? Because five to the one is the same thing as five? Now, y'all, I know I can think of this as five to the one, five squared, all the way down to five to the 70, but there's a way that I can think of the number one as a power of five. We can actually think about it as five to the power zero. Any number raised to the power zero is gonna give me one. So what I want you to think about is how many different numbers do I have up there? If you were just to look at these numbers here, how many numbers would you say you had? 70, but we have what? One more, so how many terms do we have now? 71, okay. So we have 71 terms, right? And it's just, these are what we call counting principles, y'all. So when you're counting and you're starting off at one and you go one through 10, you know you got 10 numbers. But if you start off at zero and you go up to 10, you have one additional number. So now you know you've got 11 numbers, right? Okay, uh, let's do the same thing for part C. Okay. So I'm gonna write part C over here. Part C is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, okay. All the way up to, what is that, 40,000? Okay, so again, my approach here, guys, I know that's my first term, that's my second term, that's my third term, and I wanna figure out what term would that be. Okay, I'm not starting off at one, I'm starting off at 1,000, right? But what I could do is I could say, look, if I wanted to kind of find a formula, what do I need to multiply one by to get 1,000? A thousand, right? So a thousand times n, because if n is one, a thousand times one is a thousand, a thousand times two is two thousand, a thousand times three is three thousand. So I want to figure out a thousand times what is going to give me forty thousand, right? So a thousand n equals forty thousand. If I wanted to solve for n here, y'all, all I would have to do is divide everything by a thousand. and n should be equal to 40, right? We got 40 terms there. Okie dokies. All right, so we got another part, y'all. We got a part D here. So let's see if we can't figure this one out. 
So look at D. D is 139, 27, 81, 243, all the way to 65, 61. Okay. So 139, 27, 81, all the way down to 65, 61. Okay. So when I look at this sequence, remember, if I'm looking at the sequence cell, this appears to be a geometric sequence and that I'm multiplying each of the previous terms by three. So I wanted to think about this. Remember, that's three to the one. Isn't nine the same thing as three squared? This one is three to the third. This one is three to the fourth. So what I want to figure out here is three to what power would give me 6,561? Let me show you the, what I think hopefully is the easy breezy cover way of doing that. I'm going to take my answer, 6561, okay? And I'm going to divide it by three. So look, I'm going to do it like this, 6561 divided by three, okay? 2187, okay? I'm going to divide that number by three, 729. I'm going to divide that number by three, 243, okay? I'm going to divide that number by three, 81, okay? I'm going to divide that number by three, 27, okay? I'm going to divide that number by three, and I'm going to divide that number by three, which gives me a one. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to count how many times did we do that? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that number right there is three to the eighth. Okay. Now, guys, I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to ask you a question. Those numbers right there. How many numbers do I have right there? And what I just circled, or what I just put in that blue box, how many numbers would I have? Eight? Everybody agree? But this one makes how many? Nine, right? So how many terms do we have? We actually have nine terms, right? Okay. So guys, remember, one of the things we're looking for here, we're looking for patterns, right? So just like the way I counted those was the same way we counted this one over here for part B, right? Okay, so this here, y'all, is the last problem out of 1.2. And it says, find the first five terms in sequences with the following nth terms. All right, so let me show you what I'm going to do here, y'all. I am going to do, um, I'm going to do it like this. Make a little chart. Okay, so the first part, the first one we have, part A, is 2n squared plus 3. What we're going to do, y'all, this is going to be what I call plug and chug type stuff. Okay, <clears throat> all I'm doing is everywhere I have the letter n, I'm going to plug in the number 1, the number 2, the number 3, the number 4, and the number 5. Okay, so first question, what is 1 when you square it? 1 times 1 is? One. What's one times two? Two. What's two plus three? Five, right? Okay. Let's do it when n equals two. What is two squared? What's two times two? Four. Four times two is eight. What's eight plus three? Eleven, right? Okay. We're gonna do this again. Three squared. What's three times three? Anyone know? Nine. What's nine times two? 18. What's 18 plus three? 21. Okay. Remember what I'm doing here, y'all, I'm just taking my number and I'm plugging it in. Let's do four. Four squared. Four times four is 16. 
Anybody know what 16 times 2 is? 32. What's 32 plus 3 more? 35. Good. Okay. Last one here, y'all. Uh, 5. What is 5 squared? 5 times 5. 25. What's 25 times 2? 50. 50 plus 3? There you go. That's all we're doing for each of these problems. Okay. We're going to do the same thing for part B. Part B is 4N plus 1. Okay. So remember what I'm doing. I'm doing this five times. I'm just plugging in N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3, all the way to 5. Okay. So the first time we're going to plug in 1. What's 4 times 1? 4. Plus 1 more? 5. Okay. What's 4 times 2? 8. 8 plus 1? There you go. What's 4 times 3? 12. 12 plus 1 more? 13. Okay. What's 4 times 4? 16. 16 plus 1 more? 17. And 4 times 5 is? Plus 1 more is? There you go. Okay. Y'all, for part C, this is going to be easier than what it looks. Okay. Now, for part C, because we are using exponents here, Remember what I said about exponents? Um, the numbers can get really big really quickly, okay? So what I would say in these problems is we're going to use our calculator. So, guys, if you have a calculator, and again, I'm just using the one that came here on my laptop, right? Just the real kind of plain Jane one. Or if you have something like this. And actually today, guys, I'm going to show you all uh, how you can – anybody here have one of these calculators? If you do, that's fine. If you don't, that's okay. If you do, you do. Okay, so guys, a lot of us don't uh, because they're pretty pricey, right? It's like 100 bucks at Walmart or Target. Uh, so we all have, I'm sure everybody here either has like an iPhone or an Android or something like that. They have these calculator apps. You can download it for like five or six bucks. Okay, and what it does, it's the same thing you have here, but for five or six dollars, right? Why are you going to go spend $120 when you can spend five or six? So when we, before we leave for the day, I'm going to show you how to do it, right? how you can get one of those apps. But I'm going to use my calculator here. So remember what I'm doing, 10 to each of these powers. So look, 10 to the power of 1 equals 10. Now, what am I doing after that? I'm subtracting how much? Okay, so we're just going to go minus 6 is 4. So the first number here, y'all, is 4. I'm going to do it again. But now I'm going to go 10 to the power of 2 equals Minus 6 equals 94. Okay. And I'm going to do it again. 10 to the power of 3 equals minus 6 equals 994. Okay. And let's try it again. 10 to the power of 4 minus 6. 9,994. Anybody have a guess on what my last one is going to be? Just add another 9. Okay. Boom. There you go. All right. Okay. Now let's do part D. Part D is 2N minus 1. Okay. This one we can plug and chug just like we did with the other ones. <clears throat> All right. So remember, we're plugging in N equals 1. What's 2 times 1? 2. 2 minus, uh, 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay. Uh, what's 2 times 2? Minus 1? 3. What's 2 times 3? 6, right? 6 minus 1 is 5. Very good. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. And 2 times 5 is 10. Minus 1 is? And then we're done. Okay. So, um... Okay, guys, so that is the lecture for 1.2. Let me do this.